Good morning everyone. Today, we will be delving into the complex and fascinating world of gastrointestinal lymphoma. Gastrointestinal lymphoma is a heterogeneous group of lymphomas that primarily affect the digestive system, including the stomach, small intestine, colon, and rectum. This diverse group of diseases presents unique challenges in terms of diagnosis, classification, and treatment planning. Our objective today is to explore various aspects of gastrointestinal lymphoma, including its histopathological subtypes, molecular markers and cytogenetics, clinical features, diagnostic challenges, treatment strategies, and prognosis. By the end of this session, you will have a comprehensive understanding of this complex branch of gastroenterology. Now, let's dive into our first topic. Gastrointestinal lymphoma has different subtypes based on their appearance under a microscope and location. Nodal lymphomas involve lymph nodes, while extranodal lymphomas occur outside of lymph nodes, often in the gastrointestinal tract. There are two main types, indolent lymphomas grow slowly and are linked to chronic inflammation, while aggressive lymphomas grow quickly and need more intense treatment. Identifying the histopathological subtype is important for proper diagnosis and treatment decisions. Understanding the molecular markers and cytogenetics of gastrointestinal lymphoma is crucial for accurate diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment planning. Genetic mutations, translocations, and rearrangements affect cell behavior and can offer insights into patient outcomes and treatment strategies. Summary Marginal zone lymphoma is a type of indolent lymphoma that commonly affects the stomach and is associated with chronic inflammation, especially Helicobacter pylori infection. It can be identified through endoscopic and histological findings, and treatment involves eradication of H. pylori and other therapies if needed. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma DLBCL, is the most common aggressive subtype of gastrointestinal lymphoma. It can arise de novo or transform from low-grade lymphomas, such as malt lymphoma. DLBCL presence with various clinical features, including abdominal pain, gastrointestinal bleeding, and obstruction. Histopathologically, DLBCL is characterized by the presence of large, atypical lymphoid cells that infiltrate the gastrointestinal mucosa. The aggressive nature of DLBCL necessitates a multimodal treatment approach, including chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and immunotherapy. Patient age, performance status, and comorbidities are considered when tailoring treatment regimens. Extranodal lymphomas in the gastrointestinal tract present unique challenges in diagnosis and treatment. Obtaining accurate tissue samples for diagnosis is crucial, and treatment decisions depend on factors such as location, stage, subtype, and patient factors. The selected treatment modalities include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or surgery. In summary, the relationship between H. pylori infection and gastric malt lymphoma has diagnostic implications and treatment strategies, with eradication of H. pylori resulting in disease remission in early stage cases. Advanced or refractory cases require additional interventions. Primary gastrointestinal T-cell lymphoma is a rare and aggressive form of lymphoma in the gastrointestinal tract. Diagnosis involves examining tissue samples and imaging studies, and treatment often includes chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or stem cell transplantation. Clinical trials for novel therapies are recommended. Lymphoma-associated polyposis is a rare condition characterized by the development of multiple polyps in the gastrointestinal tract due to lymphoma infiltration. These polyps are often found in the stomach, small intestine, and colon. The presence of lymphoma-associated polyposis raises significant diagnostic challenges, as these polyps can mimic other benign polyposis syndromes or familial adenomatous polyposis. Accurate diagnosis is achieved through histopathological examination, which reveals lymphoma cells infiltrating the polyps. Treatment for lymphoma-associated polyposis involves a multimodal approach, including surgical resection of the affected segments of the gastrointestinal tract, followed by chemotherapy or other systemic therapies tailored to the specific subtype of lymphoma. Endoscopy plays a crucial role in diagnosing gastrointestinal lymphoma. However, the endoscopic findings associated with lymphoma can mimic those of other benign and malignant conditions, making accurate diagnosis challenging. Endoscopic manifestations of gastrointestinal lymphoma include ulcerations, nodularity, strictures, erosions, and mass lesions. Biopsies performed during endoscopy, along with ancillary studies such as immunohistochemistry and flow cytometry, aid in precise diagnosis. Distinguishing lymphoma from inflammatory bowel disease, carcinoma, or other primary gastrointestinal malignancies requires a comprehensive assessment of clinical, endoscopic, radiological, and histopathological findings. In summary, the assessment of prognostic factors in gastrointestinal lymphoma is crucial for risk stratification and treatment planning. These factors include histopathological features, 
disease stage, genetic markers, and biomarker expression, which guide therapeutic decisions and predict patient outcomes. Radiation therapy plays a crucial role in the management of gastrointestinal lymphoma. It is often utilized as a component of multimodal treatment plans in specific clinical scenarios. The indication for radiation therapy varies depending on the lymphoma subtype, disease location, stage, and patient factors. It can be employed as primary therapy for localized disease or as part of adjuvant, consolidative, or palliative treatment approaches. Radiation therapy techniques, such as involved field radiation or involved site radiation, are used to deliver precise doses of radiation to the targeted areas while minimizing exposure to surrounding healthy tissues. Close collaboration with radiation oncologists is essential to ensure optimal treatment planning and patient care. Relapsed or refractory gastrointestinal lymphoma poses a clinical challenge. Salvage chemotherapy with regimens like SHAP, ICE, or GDP aims to achieve remission for curative treatment, such as stem cell transplantation. Novel therapies and clinical trials offer hope for improved outcomes. In summary, gastrointestinal lymphoma is a complex group of cancers. Understanding the different subtypes, diagnostic challenges, and treatment options is crucial for optimal patient care. Collaborating with other specialists is essential. Thank you for your attention.